Hello. Okay, gonna try to invite everyone back. Hey, Betty. <laughs> so, so as we were discussing earlier about Crowdcast not exactly being click and go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it always see. happens. <laughs> Oh man, uh, let's try to get everyone else back. So let me do Alex. Okay, and then Tyrone. Die Frost. Hello, hello. Hey, welcome back. This was. Um... <laughs> yeah, it happens sometimes. It's totally fine. Okay. Um, so I'm going to bring in Bifrost hopefully soon, and then also going to bring in Parallel. Man, we were just getting to a good question, too. Do you remember what the question was? Do you guys remember what the question was? <laughs> um, we were talking about the on-ramping into the Polkadot ecosystem. That was oh, the question. Yeah. yeah, that was a good question. <laughs> Man, that was the wrong time to leave. OK. Um, let's, uh, let's wait for Parallel and Bifrost to appear. Actually, actually, I was uh, I was trying to bring up the point that uh, the guys from Macala build, they're building the, their 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 wallets, I believe, right? So I think they definitely have something to say here. Okay, so I guess while we're waiting for Bifrost and Parallel, Batty, uh, no pressure, but now you have the stage. Oh, uh, on ramp and off ramp. Uh, yeah, I think I think that is something that's not a single chain can solve. Uh, uh, and also, it's probably not just Polkadot to solve as well. I think every single sort of blockchain project will have this challenge. Um, but I think we're all pleased to see even you know Jack Dorsey from Twitter is trying to solve that problem uh, for all of us, right? Uh, so I think you know right now we've already gone through the hurdle of uh, you know getting adoption and getting people's head around what is crypto, what is Bitcoin, and things like that. So once you build on RAM services for you know one set of coins, and that there will be many will be supported. So and and then right now there are many uh, various different type of uh, services because once you talk about on RAM, uh, so far there are still you have to have trusted way because that's the bridge between the fiat world and the crypto world. Right? So there are many many services already established that allow us to on RAM and off RAM. Uh, so, and then there's also different ways to help users to on ramp or off ramp. And then there's also more fintech companies coming into the space as well, uh, which we are working with a number of them. So, um, and I think, yeah, so I don't think that is a future that is that too distant away. Uh, it's more of like, we need to get the infrastructure right and all the stuff should just work. Uh, uh, and then, you know, like when you said, I think on ramp off ramp, relatively speaking, technically is an easy thing uh, to get across compared to uh, all, all the people here trying to solve uh, way more uh, difficult problems, right? So, yeah. Interesting. So by, by saying that it's a, it's a relatively easy problem to solve, are you implying that it's more of like a compliance and regulatory issue? That's the problem rather than a technical bottleneck or like, how do you define easy there? Easy is like, it's already possible, right? Because today you have many on ramp services and then it is a matter of, you know, integrating them into the platform. And also the integration also, you know, takes form in different shapes, right? when we feel it's fragmented is only because we're operating at the infrastructure level that's why you feel things are all over the place 
Uh, but once you actually get to the level of it's a real app, then you integrate with OnRamp. It's very similar. It's just like you know, you hook up your credit card, or, or sometimes it's just a service that you link up to, and then you can uh, OnRamp and OffRamp. And then, um, and that's only just the beginning, right? This is only the service I'm talking about already available today. But there are those folks who continue to building in the area, make it really easy. So, yeah. Gotcha. Okay. So Betty's perspective is that it is a is a relatively simple question to question to tackle compared to what we're building out, and there are already, uh, I guess, organizations, projects, third party services that are uh, tackling that issue. Uh, curious to know. Oh, Alex is uh, reconnecting. So I guess you know, spotlights on you, Tyrone. I'm curious to know if um, if you guys are building any or thinking about any sort of on ramp off ramps yourself. Tyrone, are you are you with uh, us? Hello, hello. Oh, uh, hey, I'm, am I here? Yes. Hi. Can you hear me? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Can I hear? You? Uh, I can hear you. So, so, uh, where are we at? So, so, what, what's the what's the question? Yeah. No. Yeah. So the question is, you know, are are you guys looking at think or are you guys thinking directly about any sort of like on ramp off ramp solutions, or are you also thinking that um, you guys will be more so focused on um, using third party services, integration with other projects uh, for that for that on ramp off ramp uh, provision. Um, actually, yeah, uh, we are currently not considering about the uh, unit third party to, to provide the on ramp or off ramp. And actually, for me, I want to actually uh, explain about the uh, um, at present, you know some um for the privacy level uh actually although those uh individual investors have um high degree of acceptance of the um you know DeFi on the uh, public chains or such as ethereum but it cannot guarantee that the uh, transaction powers privacy which uh greatly limits the uh, application perspective of you know the uh enterprise users uh the you know in in the DeFi actually as uh by is uh you know the, for focused on derivative and in the uh previous uh panel they also mentioned about the der derivative market is actually a, a trillion market and companies not only need to hide the you know the internal trading strategy and positions but um, in many cases, must also protect the privacy of uh, transaction data in, in accordance with the law. So, uh, for example, the uh, the law stipulates that uh, financial contracts must protect uh, transaction privacy, and one of main reason is to you know prevent the phenomenon of you know corruption in transaction. So. Since the court and um, public uh, chain cannot meet the com uh, requirements of enterprises in term of in term of privacy, so uh, we hence start to uh, consider it, and we think it will be a actually a necessary term that needs to be that needs to be handled. But um, it's rather a third party for us. But uh, uh, actually, I don't know. <laughs> Sure, no problem. Sounds like sounds like it's a, a problem to solve in the future state of Bifrost. Um, but I guess right. you know, in the last in the last like ten minutes of this conversation, I kind of want to bring the same type of question back to the idea of privacy. And you know, we're all working on DeFi projects here, and, and now that Manta is really tackling the privacy side, um, I, hopefully as a Polkadot parachain, right, will alleviate some sort of pressure on that user experience. But I'm curious to know, you know, before before Manta came along and you guys were working on these DeFi projects, um, how, did the conversation about privacy come up before? And you know, in what capacity and what did you guys conclude as a project uh, about how privacy would fit in or what role it would take? Um, Alex? 
Very, very good question. Thanks very much. So, um, firstly, I think that, um, as I said, privacy plays a very important role for the for users who are not that confident with uh, tracking their their transactions and um, uh, the actual amount of funds that they are holding in their bags. And uh, from from this from this perspective, uh, from this perspective, uh, definitely privacy might. Um, actually play a significant and very important role for um, um, improving the user experience for this for these types of um, of customers um, I'm sure that for example bigger investors um, like um, funds and liquidity providers uh, they might be also in need of uh, you know some solution for privacy uh, because uh, they might not be comfortable with uh, tracking of uh, their kind of um, amounts of funds, the leftovers on their wallets and so on and so forth. Um, um, and um, again, so we, 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 we don't clearly know how exactly this will be considered from the perspective of regulation. Uh, because uh, obviously, like I'm not sure that uh, regulators will be comfortable with uh, such level of privacy when you you won't be able to figure out um, like who exactly uh, transacted, how to apply taxes on certain transactions, so on and so forth. Because it's the obvious uh, kind of coin side of, uh, of of privacy. Um, so um, I, I, I personally don't have the answer to the regulatory issues that might be raised uh, through this sort of uh, privacy solutions. Uh, but definitely, again, from the perspective of uh, the um, improvements of user experience for these specific categories of users, uh, that definitely makes sense to, to integrate some you know, uh, solutions uh, in, in this uh, privacy field. Gotcha. Betty or Tyrone, curious to know how your projects were thinking about privacy before Manta came along, I guess. Uh, yeah, we, we think uh, privacy is like a uh, uh, a compulsory uh, component uh, if we really want to scale uh, DeFi for more users. And then at the same time, uh, we also recognize it's a specialized field. Not everyone is a cryptography uh, experts um, and not everyone can actually uh, solve those you know hard uh, cryptography problems uh, like zero knowledge and things like that um, so uh, I think that's also uh, we, we kind of like feel really comfortable in a polka dot ecosystem is where uh, chains can specialize or teams can actually specialize in a particular area without losing ref uh, relevance um, because you know, once you solve the uh, fundamental challenge of privacy, then uh, in uh, in the substrate, so the ecosystem, those technology can be applied directly, uh, or using you know crushing uh, technology uh, to kind of like compose with other blockchains, and then all of a sudden, uh, all of us here in the ecosystem can benefit from that, you know, specialization or from that product or service rollout from, you know, uh, uh, chains like Manta or, or others, right? So I think that is sort of the beauty uh, where we are in, in such an ecosystem. And it's also why it's very important that uh, at a very fundamental level, all the chains should be composable with each other. Um, so. Uh, right now, there's, the technology is, you know, defined by the XCM, so the crushing messaging format. Uh, but actually, it takes each one of us uh, to actually implement it and then be able to like kind of like communicate our chains to each other. So not only just the tokens can uh, can cross to each other's chains, but also services, right? This is very important, like uh, privacy services or added the DeFi services, or I'm sure like there are other services that are able to kind of like across to each other so that uh, layers above us uh, that they you know build applications uh, to serve more people they can kind of like uh, you know acquire services from each one of us like seamlessly so yeah so so that's my take awesome thank you betty um tyrone i'll let you close it out if you got any thoughts yeah uh totally agree with betty and the fundamental level of the privacy field, I think that, as I mentioned, is actually a flexible privacy method we can choose. So, um, so for you know enterprise users and for uh, normally default users, and 
in Buffalo's perspective, uh, actually, um, uh, there there is um, you know some like uh, anonymous mining uh, like this again play on D five to to play when you know when Manta has deployed a, a launch your uh, you know the anonymous swap or uh, with um, you know other integrate with the uh, other different products and um and actually i also think that you know the the privacy field is on the um you know a, a start stage uh it's, it's in the early stage and some of it uh integrated with you know zk snark and other mixes you receive a note or something uh you receive uh you know a certification after you um generated by the uh you know zero knowledge uh mechanism and actually isn't i think is for now it's hard to integrate with um some of you know derivative for example that include futures and uh and some of the derivatives like uh, you know staking derivatives but uh actually in the future we can see that um some of the actually proofs or nodes can be uh fully uh, integrate with you know with, with the uh, uh privacy products so uh yeah i'm really exciting and looking forward to it just just one thing kenny i wanted to bring up also with regards to privacy actually because uh, everyone is talking about privacy in terms of transacting and transferring value and assets between addresses but um like just one idea that came up uh, uh came into my mind just now is that uh, there is actually application of uh, this privacy solutions as an intermediate layer for applications which might have a lot, a lot of sense uh, like um, as you know we we are building the uh, audible base exchange and uh, obviously the excessive transparency in terms of placing for example limit orders in the audible book might have the negative impact on the overall system right because it actually has implied risk of front front running if you know uh, how much assets actually the particular trader has on their account and obviously if we can integrate some privacy solution that will hide the particular holder of the account uh, behind uh, the hood, it makes a lot of sense and will eliminate certain risks of, for example, front running uh, that I just mentioned. Yeah, uh, I totally agree with it. Yeah, I also want uh, uh, to say some extra to point out the, you know, the MBB attack for users like me, you know, I, I used to put, you know, three ether into, into the pool and what I get just two and two, uh, that's zero point two ESA and I get back. So that's actually I saw the ESA scan and my queue is actually being attacked by one before me and one later than me. And that's that's the that's the I think that's the serious problem that um, occur in blockchain and not even the uh, Ethereum because the validator in you know. Uh, Ethereum 2.0 or developer in Pokdo, they also have the right to, you know, to to execute the order of the um, transaction in the block. So uh, that's actually a serious problem, and uh, and I think that the only solution for it is not to change the mechanism, but the privacy field will change it and uh, from the you know the source of the uh the transaction yeah yeah when it comes to privacy and mev uh front running right these are this is a whole topic onto itself but unfortunately you know we're we're at time and we've got to get to our final panel thank you guys really appreciate your time thank you for being here uh, i think we got a lot of really great insight and thanks for uh, being so resilient <laughs> we jumped from one one to another and you know all still here um awesome so uh yeah with that being said right like i can invite you guys off stage and uh again thank you for your time and we'll be preparing for the third and final question or panel <laughs> yeah thank thanks you. for having us here yeah appreciate um, thanks nice you very much everyone. Bye. appreciate bye. it nice meeting you bye bye bye, bye, bye. okay
All right, we are inviting our third and final panel up here. Hello, hello. Hey. Hi, Kenny. Kenny. All hello, right. Hello. Hey, can you hear me? Yeah, I'm wearing the Manta t-shirt. Nice. I'm wearing a <laughs> Nike t-shirt. Nike, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. yeah, okay. <laughs> so, okay, let's hello. get where we here? Go. Hey. Hi, 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 thank you. Hi, Victor. How are you guys doing? Great. How are you guys? Great, great. great. Long great. time. Yeah, long time to see. Bala in here. Uh, hi. And then I believe that we are just waiting on um, on Soda. Uh, well, Marvin's connecting right now, so we're still waiting on Soda. Um, Hi. Hey. Hi guys. Hey. Yeah, so oh Marvin is here. Yeah. It's really a great show. Hi Marvin, how are you guys? Thank you. Let me I'm gonna jump off the screen just so that we can get soda in here. Oh hey. perfect. Hey. Thank you for the invitation. Hello guys. How are you? Doing good, doing good. Great, great. Uh, oh, yeah, you... thank you, thank you, Kenny, for inviting everyone. Uh, Kenny is left. Uh, thank you, everyone, for coming, and it's it's great great pleasure to invite everyone here. And uh, it's really late in Shanghai, and uh, maybe, but I think we everyone's in different time zone, so maybe we can start right now. And uh, this panel is more focused on Polkadot after we've been talking about all of the. Uh, the the DeFi and all of the like privacy from investment side, and then let's just dive into the Polkadot. So maybe the first question will be like, everyone, please just introduce yourself and what you guys doing in the in the Polkadot space, and also uh, please just tell one of your like on-chain privacy like honor story. Like that would be something really interesting from the previous panel. Yeah, maybe we can start from Alistair and Denko and Marvin Soda. Hi. Uh, I'm Alistair, I'm lead scientist at the Web3 Foundation. Uh, I sort of played a part in designing some of the core protocols for Polkadot. Um, as for privacy horror stories, well, there is no privacy, so. <laughs> Uh, you can find out pretty much what everyone did. I mean, I still don't know who Robot Heart and Prince Kusama are, but I can tell you when they bought their, their KSM on which, on which exchange. Well, that's pretty hard. <laughs> Maybe Denko? Sure. Hey, guys. So uh, I'm Denko. I'm, I'm CEO of Refinance. Uh, refinance is uh, building Reef Chain right now. And uh, regarding the question that you had uh, on the privacy side, uh, I mean, I didn't have any horror stories in particular, but I know some people that had. So the issue is that users assume that because uh, they're behind addresses, they can do whatever they want. But, you know, at, few, at, at certain, you know, endpoints, you kind of reveal your identity. For example, if you participate with the same address in all of these depths, and then, you know, uh, someone knows you and then you get tagged, and, you know. So the, the horror stories were basically, you know, random people knowing the balance of other people. And that was like, 
the biggest issue, right? It's, it's as if someone knows how much money you have in your bank account. And it's not so much about the balance, it's more about the actions that were executed. Um, and especially the fact that, you know, people, some, you know, some things that they might want to buy on the internet, they might don't want to buy with a debit card. And then uh, someone somehow figured that some guy was buying some stuff that, for example, he was not supposed to buy or whatever. So it, it's not, it was not like illegal or anything, it was just, you know, optics wise, it was not good for the person. So I guess that was a pretty big horror story for him. So when it comes on, you know, uh, when we start talking about privacy, I think it's a, it's a big value add uh, on certain uh, endpoints. But again, it's like, I think the use cases need to be evaluated like per, per case, right? Because it's very easy, you know, to abuse the, the fact that something is, is private right? and use it then for negative and illegal stuff. So, yeah. That that's my my horror story. I think Victor's no, screen is, I guess, uh, uh, is frozen. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, my turn. Why not? Oh, all right, cool. Uh, hello everyone, my name is Sota Watanabe. I'm founder of Asta Network and Shiden Network. Uh, Asta Network is a Polkadot DAP hub supporting Ethereum virtual machine, web assembly, and the layer two solution, especially ZK rollup, uh, zero knowledge proof. So maybe I'm going to talk about a little bit about ZK rollup uh, later. And my horror story is, um, I don't have a match, but um, we have registered on-chain identity so all the teams, you know, token are visible and verifiable from the, the community. So everybody knows um, our team pay for what and to who. So yeah, probably my address was disclosed and anyone can see my address and I'm, what I'm paying for. So this can be a, yeah, this will be a my horror story, story in the future. Yes, thank you for sharing. Remember, I think you, you must have a lot of things to share. Now oh, Marvin is frozen. Hello? Frozen. Yeah, he's, he's frozen. Maybe firewall. Okay, I thought... I don't yeah, know. firewall is horror story. <laughs> okay i oh, yeah i mean there's a lot of trouble from the crowd broadcast Mami, yeah. your okay uh so uh is it uh is now okay yeah can uh, we can hear you but we can't saw you right now maybe you turn off the camera okay. it seems yeah i did that already. you know to to be more influenced. So yeah. uh, let me try again. Oh, you can do that right now. Yeah, yeah, I can okay, cool. you right now. I can you right now. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So um, yeah, so uh, hi everyone. Uh, thank you for joining the meeting today. And uh, in the last two panels, we saw you know, very um, excited uh, discussions. Uh, my name is Marwan Tu. Uh, I'm the founder of uh, Fana Network, and I'm also the CEO of Hush Forest, which is the Singapore-based company who development uh, the core part of Fana Network. And uh, as our council already been uh, 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 elected uh, by the public, so I'm now uh, is also um, a council member for Kala Network, which is a Kusama version of Fala, and. Um, yeah, so in one sentence, you know, Fire Network is a privacy preserving cloud computation service target to uh, Web3. And our version is that we want to replace the current centralized cloud platform little by little. And um, yeah, so, but, but, you know, specific features of Fire Network is that we suppose the data privacy while remaining trustless. 
And unlike, you know, centralized cloud service, we don't own any server or data centers. Anyone can provide their permission these servers into Fala. And because of the combination of blockchain and trusted security environment, we can make sure that the servers can't be evil even when they're out, you know, they're in an edge network environment. So, uh, so to speak, uh, we are kind of like, you know, uh, privacy, but more uh, privacy service and technology, but more focus on off chain to provide a um, Web3 version of cloud platform to replace the centralized cloud. Uh, yeah, so uh, many people think, uh, Fala, you know, uh, and Meta Network is the same, you know, uh, exactly the same. Uh, uh, target, but actually, it's not. Um, we are more, you know, put our attention in computation and uh, in uh, uh, cloud service. But uh, yeah, we think uh, in the future, Web3 Cloud is quite important because now most of the front end and back end of uh, decentralized, decentralized applications are still running on uh, AWS and GCP. So that's most of the pro of staking um, nodes. So uh, yeah, so that's something about me. Thank you, uh, Victor. Yeah, cool. Uh, yeah, thank you for sharing. It's it's really amazing, like to to hear everything about this. And uh, so the next question actually is about Polkadot. Uh, for the for the ecosystem project, like or the others, like why why you decide to build on Polkadot, and uh, for Polkadot, you know, like for Alistair, definitely you're building Polkadot and maybe you can summarize, you know, and to give the our community have a more like general or more deep dive into what Polkadot it is. And uh, especially like why is you know why it's different with the, the like other ecosystem. Well I you you've all seen the uh the spiel a few times I think Polkadot is a, a system of parallel state machines with shared decentralized security. Uh, and this already says why it's different from everyone else. Um, so so we, one thing is we, we have multiple state machines. We, we, we now have uh, lots of power chains on Kusama. Um, and uh, each of them is different. Uh, and this is, this is um, so we can be different on a sort of state machine, in this case, on a parachain level, whereas, you know, in Ethereum, you would have to be, you know, there's different smart contracts, but it's all running under the same system. Um, as opposed to sort of other systems of the many chains out there, we have shared security. Uh, we all sort of have a common system. We can all sort of uh, hopefully talk to each other with a, uh, you know, the chains can uh, interoperate with a easier trust model than, if they were secured separately. Um, well, abstractly, that's that's what Polkadot is. So maybe Sarita? You're you're muted. You're, you're muted. muted. Sorry. Sorry for that. Yeah, Arista talked about like a technical side, so I would like to talk about like a visionary side. So Polkadot is the foundation of the Web 3.0. So uh, a lot of the data and a lot of the, the you know, um, yeah, mainly data controlled by the centralized authority, and mainly, you know, GAFA, the Google, Amazon, Apple, and Facebook. And now it is 21 century and blockchain was invented. So blockchain is based on the peer-to-peer -peer network. And now we have a technology to make peer-to-peer -peer autonomous organization for the, for the next generation. So yeah, uh, I think Polkadot is going to connect blockchain. So internet is connected right now, but blockchain is independent. Like Bitcoin is independent, Ethereum is independent. So I believe that Polkadot connect blockchain just like internet of today. Yeah, this is my Polkadot. <laughs> Thanks, Shona. Yeah, so uh, I have I have multiple like uh, analogies that I used to explain to like 
you know, friends and family and, and newcomers to the space. So the, the first one was, uh, you know, how I would explain Polkadot is, you know, in every industry, when there is something new, let's say you have, uh, you know, the blockchain coming, let's say Bitcoin was the first one. And then uh, you have this, this uh, you know, uh, the, the progression curve is, is very aggressive because people come up with different ideas, they can improve on it. It's like, you know, you have iPhone, iPhone, iPhone 3, for example, right? And then we can we can see that the iPhone 4 is like like you know way better than iPhone 3. And then we have iPhone 5. So these steps are pretty big. So what happens with Polkadot? Oh, and, and again on the analogy. So so what happens over time? Any industry, even if it's the iPhone industry or the you know even if it's like a you know a 4K television or 8K whatever, it flattens out. So all the innovation it's so so hard to add you know something else on top. So basically, Polkadot is the most advanced technology that was built by the people that were basically building the whole, you know, journey. So, you know, the people that were contributing to Ethereum, they were like, okay, this is great, but we can do something better. So, you know, Polkadot is basically like internet of blockchains, just like, you know, how you have this, you know, HTTP protocol where we access all the websites through this protocol. So Polkadot is basically the network through which one would be able to access all the blockchains. So obviously it's not just the vision, but you know, it's also about people that can deliver on this and they've delivered on other things as well. So that's why we decided to, you know, um, to focus towards, towards Polkadot and towards Substrate. So basically Substrate is the, the framework with which the parachains are built and Polkadot, the Polkadot network itself is also built with, uh, with Substrate, right? So, Basically, it's the most advanced blockchain technology that currently exists. That's it. Great. Yeah. Uh, um, let me think. I I, I think uh, both Sinta and Danko and uh, um, uh, uh already uh described very well uh so uh, i i will, I will uh, use something different like um uh i don't know if you uh guys uh saw uh, you know the lord of rings of course you did so in my understanding i <clears throat> i treat many blockchains like the rings you know so uh you know some rings are you know built to uh, us or um Elves or human beings, right? Not for the human kings, but uh, each of the ring have its own feature and like is extremely fast, higher uh, TPS um, or you know EVM capable. You know, I, I, I think it's the you know the 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 layer one is very similar with uh, this uh, feature uh, built uh, rings, but uh, there's still some, need some connection or some you know the the the, the layer zero so so to speak to um uh make connection and uh controlled by a trusted this way uh to control this uh, blockchain so i think hold out relation is very like you know the lord of the rings to control the dove's rings elf's rings and human being race so uh, that's my opinion about what Polkadot is. It's a layer zero, it's the Lord of Ring. Great, yeah, really interesting. So this is the first time I heard. Uh, so cool, about the Polkadot, so for the, basically the first thing we, we think about is the interoperable and uh, the interoperability is the, the basically the word that everyone throw, uh, throw to the Polkadot and uh, uh, especially like the last panel, also there's a lot of speakers talking about this. And uh, maybe we, you guys, can you guys also talk about a kind of the example, the, the Polkadot, uh, in, about the Polkadot interoperability. Uh, so, and maybe it's coming have some connection with, with Manta or Calamari. Yeah, I can start. Uh, sorry, I start. Yeah, um, I think Manta, ha Manta and Calamari has a you know, very important role in the Polkadot and the Xama ecosystem. 
because privacy matters and privacy is generally speaking you know expensive to implement the reason why privacy is not well you know implemented in the blockchain ecosystem is making privacy on chain is expensive so we would like to work with manta actually we have been working with manta and calamari and once calamari became a parachain i would like to you know send our shiden token or asta token to calamari and make a privacy use case privacy DeFi use case on calamari or vice versa or we can we import the Kalamari's token to uh, Shiden, or it may be possible to make a high speed, the privacy enhanced transaction on our platform. But this is just an idea. So we are really looking forward to making privacy use case on the top of Xama and Polkadot in coming months. Yeah, sorry, I stopped. Cool. Uh, uh, you, you, you're muted. Yeah. That is your immune. Yes, this 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 is the kind of thing we need. So, um, polka dot sort of uh, should eventually make it easy for power chains to talk to each other. We've already got that, but specifically in the in, in the manta of, of addressing privacy, um, it's it's not enough to be private on manta or Fala and have the rest of the, the, the DeFi world in, entirely open. You know, if I sort of create a, a pseudonym on one of these things, then you can't, you know, tr link the, how I got these tokens in, but I'm still going to be leaking metadata everywhere. So, I mean, what we really want is, is, is privacy everywhere in, in um, you, you to be able to be, to be able to use privacy everywhere. And for the interoperability, it, it's really important then that we basically have a way of privately communicated, you know, private cross-chain things. Uh, like, say, a, a cross-chain shielded pool, where you wouldn't know what chain something was coming from, or that kind of thing. That, that's what I'd like to see. Cool. Yeah, okay. so re re regarding, regarding interoperability, you know, um, basically, the interoperability issue is not just present in the blockchain landscape it's present pretty much everywhere uh, hence why you know people have decided to build different protocols different you know object annotations and then we have different improvements over time but some some of those things like you know they're not useful to do like for example json it's one way where you can interoperate between different systems right it's, it's a protocol pretty much like right? Um, but the problem with, um, with this is that, uh, you know, you, you, you get the network effect. The network effect is super, super important because it's, you know, now, now we speak English and now if I, if I invent a new, pro a, a new language, not many people know how to speak this language and then I cannot interoperate with these people. So basically in order for a certain protocol to have, uh, you know, interoperability value, you need, you know, multiple actors. So uh, obviously Polkadot's, you know, uh, biggest value add is that you have this layer built in into the network. So it's not just a shared security where you have the, you know, the main validators. So all the power chains, they don't have to worry about, you know, this part. Uh, but they, they're also building the, the protocol for the basically like a, a way between the power chains to, to communicate between each other. And then you can exchange state, etc. And uh, obviously, you know, uh, Reef's vision is to to uh, to become a, a power chain uh, one day, and um, I I believe that uh, this this you know the the the, the, the interoperability protocol that Polkadot is building is so far the you know at least the vision because it's still not you know there yet, but it seems to be the best implementation of uh, of an interoperable protocol between blockchains. So. Yeah, and uh, of course, um, we have different blockchains now. Uh, you know, we are utilizing this technology for different different like um, uh, use cases. So one blockchain is good for one thing, another blockchain is good for another thing. And a lot of people are generalizing like TPS. Um, I mean, we've, we've been talking about TPS five years ago and it seems like TPS is still like the number one metric that that the retail investors are looking at, which it obviously showed 
how wrong it is that you don't just look at the TPS, it's just one parameter, right? So, um, yeah, uh, that's why you have, you know, multiple power chains because they have different use cases. And when the interoperability layer is, is set in place, basically, you know, you can, you can deploy whatever you want. Uh, you, you can, it's like you go on digital ocean now and you are like, okay, I need this uh, hardware for this purpose with this OS. You just click a few buttons and then you, you, you know, something gets pinned up. So I imagine, you know, Polkadot down the, down the road will be something like that. Like, you know, like AWS basically. So what you do, you go in a single UI, you're like, okay, I want DeFi and then you click Reef or Akala. I want this and that. And then at the end, you know, you just, you just deploy your code base because over time, multiple power chains will support multiple, multiple VMs and you will still be able to communicate through the, through the interoperability layer. So yeah, it's, uh, it's basically the crucial thing to, to have. And it's, uh, it's seems to be the best implementation so far. So that's, that's my opinion. Yeah, I totally agree with the, uh, with uh, Danko just uh, mentioned that. Um, yeah, the, the, the reason that uh, even after uh, like two years uh, in the ecosystem, uh, we are still have the strong confidence. You've gone quiet. Yeah. So what, what, the, what the question? You have another question? Yeah, no, it froze. I think we are losing you. Yeah, it again. No, it seems no. the moment I haven't finished yet, but oh. uh, he's joining now or? To, to carry on from what you said, Denko, yeah, so, so TPS is, is not really useful without scaling. Like we, we need these multiple chains uh, because otherwise one machine can't handle it. So th there's people that, that claim they, 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 they can match Visa for their TPS, but that isn't useful. Mm -hmm. uh, unless you have really good like clients, you're, uh, no one can deal with that if you actually have that every day. And yeah, we're yeah, definitely cool. working on it. Yeah, great. Uh, I think uh, about uh, after about the polka dot, we can dip in, dive into more about the privacy. Like you know, uh, how do you guys see the role of privacy in the polka dot space? And uh, and especially right now, like everyone is talking about the multi chain, and also lots of layer two uh, on Ethereum, and also you know like Solana or other ecosystem. And do you think, you know, uh, like what's the difference of the, you know, privacy is private, prioritized, you know, uh, should be in Polkadot than any other ecosystem? Uh, because I mean, I, I actually, we, we read the article like really early, uh, like uh, article written by Gavin Wood since 2014 about, you know, like we are, you know, like post Snowden, post Snowden time you know after the you know uh, after all of this issue happens so but basically his vision is about the privacy and we are also like to hear what you guys thinking about the parity and also from the polka dots so what's what's kind of the prioritize about the, the privacy yeah maybe we start from our it seems not here. Let's go back to Alistair. Yeah. Right. So we're still trying to get sort of the, the tools that we, you know, that we'll need to build a private thing on. Um, like we're doing some work to make sure that we, we have access to all the cryptography, all the cryptographic primitives. We need to do snarks and things. I, I think there's uh, some progress needs to be made there um, on the back end. But what's, but sort of um, once we have everything, in the end, uh, you know, we'd like to see pri privacy on almost everything in Polkadot and, uh, you know, optionally. Um, but at least, you know, the little guy should, should always have the option of being private. And to get there, we, we need, you know, it, it, it teams build private solutions and then they need to work out how to get them to work together so we can be private all the way through. Uh, we need to think about things like network privacy and not just protocol level privacy. 
you know, the, the, the problem with privacy is you leak something somewhere and suddenly everyone knows who you are. Um, and I, I think, you know, it's still, uh, we're still pretty early and there's a lot of stuff we need to, to build. So I, I agree completely. So uh, basically, I think the privacy, it should be optional and it should be easily composable. Uh, so, you know, uh, people that are building uh, some very basic depth, they should be, you know, on, on, I mean, they, let's assume they're developers. Uh, they should be able to easily add uh, the, the privacy layer on their, uh, you know, smart contract or, uh, yeah. So the, when this gets achieved i think we, we we're getting at a point it's like you know it's like um if we give an analogy you have the, the the vpn right now which is obviously not privacy but it's kind of like okay it's some some layer that improves something um so you're not you know fully visible but it it, it adds some value okay? but the, the point is the usability of it like you go it's one click the ui the ux from all the apps, it doesn't matter, nothing changes, it's in the networking layer, no one cares, it just works, right? So, you know, with blockchain, we, we just get have to get to this point where, uh, you know, it's optional and then someone wanna do it, done. And again, uh, it has to be done in a way where you can either shift between, uh, I mean, you, you can just decide to, to go to this, uh, to the privacy mode immediately because you know, you might leak some metadata. So it's like another user, you know, how you have two usernames on your MacBook. This is how it should be. It, it's not as seamless as VPN, but it's, it's, it's UX wise, it's at, as close as it gets. So once we get to this point, it's basically done. And um, I think all of those, uh, all, all the, the, the current progress that, that's been done on this front uh, seems promising because uh, it's not, it's not like Monero used to be where it's its own infrastructure. So it's like sandboxed in its own things. It cannot communicate. This is private and then that's it. Now people started thinking, how can we introduce this in blockchains? They're not by default, you know, private. So that's, I think, a, a good direction to go. Cool. Um, yeah, I, I would like to talk about privacy on Polkadot from a different perspective. Uh, privacy on Ethereum and privacy on Polkadot is the different story because if privacy solution is built on Ethereum blockchain, uh, anyone anyone in the Ethereum ecosystem can use that one because privacy solution is on Ethereum blockchain. But in terms of the Polkadot, Polkadot has a lot of the parachain and relay chain. If privacy solution is built on a parachain, we have to import this solution to another parachain through cross-chain messaging passing. So uh, I think cross-chain messaging passing is the, one of the most important feature we should have. And the there, there are six summer parachain at this moment. And the cross-chain messaging passing is the next big things. So uh, actually, I have a question to Arista. Uh, regarding the cross-chain messaging passing, could you teach me the status and what, what did you achieve? And what is the problem of the cross-chain messaging passing on Kusama? Uh, so currently on, on, on Kusama, uh, we can send messages to the relay chain. Uh, the relay chain can send messages to parachains, and parachains can if talk to each other via the relay chain. Mm. Uh, you should be able to, if you can open an HRMP channel, uh, and uh, at the moment it's a little tricky, like you kind of have their, their thing to make it easier to do this by governance rather than trying to code it in. Um, once you open a channel, then, then you'll be able to send messages. Uh, we recently uh, have sort of XCM, mm -hmm. and that's getting more full featured. Uh, this will allow you to um, do things like, um, you know, send things with the currency of a, of a third chain or pay for fees in, in different currencies and on different chains and, and work out, you know, uh, send change back, maybe or maybe not. Lots of options for what you can do. Um, in the future, yeah. uh, we're, going to, we're going to move XCMP off-chain, which is sort of what we oh, planned in the beginning. Well, no. Mm -hmm. Okay, when I say off-chain, it's like, I mean off the relay chain. 
Ah. So when you want to send a message, it, it shouldn't, you know, uh, so the, currently you would, you would put something on the, you send the message to the relay chain, we put it on the relay chain and send mm -hmm. it down, but that this is no good because the relay chain uh, then becomes the, the scalability bottleneck. Uh, yeah. So what you want to do is to store the minimal amount of uh, data on the relay chain, sort of, you only put hashes and you don't even want to put the hash of every message or even mm -hmm. the hash of a message to every chain, you just want to put one hash and, you know, uh, so, 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 so we, we, we have a solution designed whereby you can have very little data on the relay chain and then you can send message sort of more directly from one chain to another. Interesting. This is new for me, so yeah, thank you for the inputs. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's really great to know this. Yeah. Uh, cool. I think Marwa, maybe I'm not sure you heard, follow the, the question. Uh, we just talk about the the like the privacy in Polkadot ecosystem. I mean, Fala definitely also have a lot of things to share about this. What do you think the role of privacy in the Polkadot ecosystem? And uh, there's a lot of other you know ecosystem like you know the Ethereum layer two and uh, all of the like Solana merging into the crypto space. And uh, what do you think? You know, Polkadot uh, will privatize the the uh, uh, privacy, you know, than other ecosystem. Yeah. So, can you hear me? Yes. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. So, um, uh, first, uh, I suggest you know all the, um, uh, 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 guys who joined this um, panel uh, could uh, if you got time, please uh, read you know the the blogs that Gavin uh, present a couple of days before about uh, um, the total design of um, XMP infrastructure, which is uh, very clear and you know simply uh, explain many things. And uh, from our understanding, we think um, the most potential part of XMP is that uh, not only for uh, you know a size transfer, many uh, general user or even some developers when they choose the ecosystem, they will pick up the you know they will think XMP is like a, another version of Bridge, which is uh, totally wrong. You know, it's like a, it's a purely a channel for message and in this perspective we are expecting like much more than just uh, you know token transfer between parallel chains such use cases which of course this kind of use cases is excellent and uh, be uh, needed in the early stage uh during this uh, six parallel chains or uh, 10 after a couple of months but we think um the most uh uh, you know, we 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 are uh, expecting uh, the 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 most uh, killer app would be uh, come out from the uh, XMP uh, uh, using different uh, 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 parallel chains and different smart contracts on these parallel chains. It means that maybe the smart contract A on a shared network can use the you know, directly use the smart contract B on color network and use some palette on uh, meta network. All of these transactions combined together and it happened just in one block. And the the this kind of you know privacy preserving is something I you know quite different from uh well like Tornado Cash or other ZK knowledge base um, layer two are uh, presenting to Ethereum and BSC. We didn't see any you know good to go use uh, experienced uh, layer two privacy layer two to BSC yet, and uh, we think um, for many users, especially for DeFi users, the privacy not happened uh, should not happen after or before they transfer or, uh, you know, uh, be a farmer on the Fed, you know, uh, harvest or, you know, something like this, but happened during these activities. For example, when I click my mouse and uh, I want to uh, lend some uh, tokens, uh, lend some assets from compound, um, uh, some of the profitable, um, 
uh, activities will be purchased immediately or be eaten immediately by <laughs> by um, MEV, you know, robots and uh, all of these smart contract robots are eating many profit uh, from the you know profitable positions on chain uh, before even before before the transaction happened. So. Uh, the ability from XMP to combine with the ability of, for example, Fala or uh, uh, Manta or uh, Shield Network can combine together, provide one single transaction, one single deal in one block, but using different chains features to protect the privacy from uh, user activities. So that's what I'm expecting in the you know, next coming months or even years. We can wait for that, but this would be like a killer app, you know, to, you know, uh, separate Polkadot ecosystem and Solana and BSC and Ethereum. This is something um, other ecosystem can never do. So uh, that's my, uh, yes, that, that's my version of it. Thank you, Victor. We, we'd all love to see that vision, I think. Um, but there's, there's still a few, a lot of technical challenges to go. Um, so yeah, there's at least one interoperability tech thing, which not interoperability per se, but it, it, it's an important. So one of the, a lot of the difficulties with um, getting chains to talk to each other is, is the trust model. Who do people, does this chain have to trust this chain? Does the, does the user, who's the user trusting? The user probably trusts everyone they're trying to interact with, but maybe not everyone they're not. Um, and so for instance, one of the things we, we, we do for tokens is, is if you know your chain wants to be sovereign over this token, then uh, one way to do that would be to do, uh, and you want to, but, but people on other chains want to use it. One way to do that would, would be to, to wrap the token to another chain. Um, so, so this your your chain would have accounts for each of these other chains, and and sort of users on these chains would have sort of sub accounts of of, of the main chain account, um, and that chain would keep track of those. But the, but then in order to transfer something, I would have to from one chain to another chain. I would have to talk to the chain that actually owns the asset, and um, you know have that move from uh, this this chain account to this other chain account. Now we can. Now do that with XCM. We have a reserve account model, but it's very difficult to make this private, right? Um, because you can see if, if, if this other chain has, has has a thing for this account on, on this chain, this account for this chain, I can now see when when assets are flowing from this chain to this other chain. Um, that there's sort of another option for for asset transfer, which is you can teleport assets. You basically just burn them on one side and mint them on the other. Um, but that means now that these chain that the asset basically is exposed to the risk of both these chains. It's no longer we're no longer saying that it's owned by this this one chain, right? Uh, the, the, the trust is is maybe weakened. Now uh, we, we we have a future idea for Polkadot. We have an idea called Spree, which will enable uh, basically a shared code across chains that can talk to each other and then with, with spree you'd be able to uh you know we, we'd have some code across all chains which you you know be able to manage who should be able to print this asset and you could send it to another chain just by teleporting to, to this you know this this, this spree module and uh the shared code and shared security would ensure that this that this other chain can never print uh, your tokens, no matter what happens to governance uh, and other things. Um, with something like this, we might be able to do uh, cross-chain privacy a bit more easily. If you know, we we could do you know the sort of Z the, the Zcash type thing that Mad is doing in, inside a Spring module. If we could do that, then uh, we could teleport things from one chain to another without them trusting. Um, otherwise. Uh, you'd have to think of, uh, you'd have to get, you have to get, if you want real cross-chain privacy, you have to get a bit more creative about what your trust model is for your assets. Like who, who do they trust? Uh, which, you know, parachains, uh, do we trust? And maybe we, we, we have, maybe, maybe we even have trust across ecosystem, across Polkadot and Kusama or across even, you know, Polkadot and Ethereum, although that would be hard. 
Um, and that needs uh, a lot more thinking because the wrapped open model doesn't work. I see. Thank you for sharing that. It's yeah. actually really interesting and uh, really helpful. Uh, cool. Uh, I think uh, le let's start, maybe let's just uh, stop from here. And uh, uh, that's basically all the questions. Uh, I'm running all of the questions here. And uh, um, yeah, thank you for, thank you everyone for joining the panel. Thank, Thank you, everyone. You. Well, thanks also, guys, for following. I see there were like a bunch of free questions, so I'll try to answer them in our community group. Uh, but it was a super insightful panel. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank and you. thank you to the audience for uh, taking the time to uh, listen to all this insight today. And uh, this concludes the uh, conversation. Uh, if you have any other questions, you know, just just ping us on Twitter, and uh, we're happy to direct it to the appropriate. Uh, person to answer them for you. So again, thank you all and uh, hope you all have a nice day. Bye.